So the question says AC equals to 8 centimeters and M is the midpoint of AC. NM and OM are arcs of circles. Show the shaded region is given by 8 over 3 multiplied by all in brackets 2 root 3 minus pi centimeters squared. So we have an isosceles triangle within this diagram since the base angles of this triangle are equal and we also have two sectors which are both equal to each other. And so what we can do is to work out the shaded region which is marked in red, we can work out the area of the isosceles triangle and then work out the area of the two sectors and then take them away from the area of the isosceles triangle to give us the shaded area that we require. So we're first told that AC equals to 8 centimeters. So that's the base length here, A to C is equal to 8 centimeters. Since M is the midpoint of AC, then we know that the length A to M is equal to 4 centimeters, and the length M to C is also equal to 4 centimeters. So if we work out the sector area of one of these sectors, then we can multiply that by 2 to work out the sector area of both of these sectors. So let's take out one of these sectors. Looking at this sector, we have an angle of 30 degrees and a radius of 4 centimeters. And so if we use the formula for sector area, when our angle is in degrees, we have that sector area equals to theta, where theta is our angle, divided by 360 multiplied by pi r squared. So using this formula, we have that the sector area is equal to, so theta is 30 degrees, and so we substitute that in, divided by 360 multiplied by pi r squared, where r is 4 centimeters. So we have 4 squared here. Working this out, 30 divided by 360 is equal to 1 over 12. 4 squared is equal to 16, and so we're multiplying by 16 pi. If we simplify this, we end up with 4 over 3 pi, since 4 goes into 16 4 times, and 4 goes into 12 3 times. So since we have two of these sectors within our diagram, then we get that the total area of the two sectors is equal to 2 multiplied by what we just worked out for one of the sectors. And so this would be equal to 2 multiplied by 4 over 3 pi, which simplifies to 8 over 3 pi. And so we begin to see that what we're trying to show in this question, we have some of those values within what we've just worked out. Let's now consider how we work out the area of the isosceles triangle within this diagram. So looking at the triangle, the first thing we can calculate is the missing angle here at the top. And so angles in the triangle add up to 180 degrees. So taking away 30 plus 30, which gives us 60 from 180, we end up with 120 degrees at the top here. And so we see that this triangle is not a right angled triangle. So one way we can work out the area of a non right angled triangle is that we can use the formula a half AB multiplied by sine C, where A and B are two side lengths and capital C is the angle in between. And so if we label this top vertex as capital B, then we know that the opposite side to capital B must be lowercase b, the opposite side to capital C must be lowercase c, and the opposite side to capital A must be lowercase a. And so in this triangle, to use this formula here for the area of the triangle, we require two side lengths and an angle in between. And so we see that we have one of the side lengths already, which is eight centimeters. And we also have all three angles within the triangle. We require one of these other side lengths. So if we calculate C or A, both of these lengths would be the same since we have an isosceles triangle. Then we can use our formula here to work out the area of this triangle. So let's calculate the length C. We have the opposite angle to C, which is 30 degrees. 
and we also have this side length here and the opposite angle to this side length which is 120 degrees. So since we have two angles and two side lengths where one of those values is unknown then we can use the sine rule to work out that unknown value. Have C over sine of the opposite angle to C which is 30 degrees here so sine of 30 equals to 8 centimeters so 8 over the sine of the angle opposite 8 centimeters which is 120 degrees here so sine of 120 so to calculate the value of C, we multiply both sides by sine 30 degrees and so we get C equals to 8 over sine of 120 degrees multiplied by sine of 30 degrees. And so if we put all of this into a calculator, we get that C equals to 8 root 3 over 3. So replacing C with this value we have 8 root 3 over 3 for the side length A to B. We can now use the formula to work out the area of this triangle. So the two side lengths that we have are 8 root 3 over 3 and 8 and the angle in between those two side lengths is 30 degrees. We get that the area of the triangle equals to a half multiplied by 8 root 3 over 3 multiplied by 8 multiplied by sine of the angle in between which is 30 degrees. We put this into a calculator we find that we get an answer of 16 root 3 all over 3. And since the lengths that we were looking at were measured in centimeters and we have an area here then our units here are its centimeters squared. Our units for the total area of both of the sectors are also centimeters squared. The area of the isosceles triangle is equal to 16 root 3 over 3 centimeters squared. So finally, to obtain our shaded region in red here, we have the area of the triangle minus the area of the two sectors which leaves us with the area that we require. So the area of the triangle is 16 root 3 over 3 centimeters squared and we subtract that from the area of the two sectors which is 8 over 3 multiplied by pi centimeters squared and that leaves us with the area that we require. And so since both of these values have units of centimetres squared, we know that our solution is going to have units of centimetres squared. And so let's write the numbers in front. We have 16 root 3 over 3 minus 8 over 3 pi. And so if we look at what we're trying to show, we see that 8 over 3 is factorised from these two values inside the brackets here. So let's factorize 8 over 3 from the two values that we have and see what we end up with. So factorizing 8 over 3, we get 8 over 3 and then in brackets, we need the number that we multiply 8 over 3 with to get 16 root 3 over 3. And that number is 2 root 3. We minus that from, so 8 over 3 factorized from this value leaves us with minus pi. And this is what we were trying to show in this question. And so we're done.